I just finished listening to one of y'all's episodes and I love it when you guys say bad words. I never really like considered it. And then I got so many, like in the beginning, I used to get so many reviews that were like, I wish I could listen to this podcast with my family, but she doesn't know how to speak properly. And I'd be like, oh, I didn't realize it was such a big deal. <laughs> oh, there's Mabel. My puppy. Hi. Hi. Oh, <laughs> Here with us. I'm all down for that. I love a pet. I love a pet moment. So we're excited to be talking to Emma from the Real Life Ghost Stories podcast. And Rebecca and I have both been binge listening to your show. Emma, your voice is great. And like, we have a rule at Haunted AF that you don't get to use the scary voice. Like, just tell your story. But your scary voice <laughs> is the shit. It is so cute. So what kind of mood do you set? Do you know, it's funny because we don't really set any mood. Uh, yeah, because I we- I full on believe you had like candles and it was darkly lit and like a black veil over your face. <laughs> I'm like in my pajamas with my hair scraped up. Dan's probably just finished a day of work and I'm like, come on, I'm going to tell you a story about demons. And he's like, please don't do this. I can't. And then every now when we do episodes beforehand, he's like, are you going to do a voice? Because if you're going to do a voice, you need to warn me beforehand. Rebecca and I both, both of our spouses are skeptics listening to you talk to Dan and then Dan's like, oh, I'm, I'm too scared. You know, it's a response to it. Because my husband's response is always like, that'd be a great story if ghosts were real, but they're not. I just think that like, you know, they're fun. It's Ghost stories are great. I always say that they give you a space to be like, scared and anxious in a really contained space you know you're not like because there's so much terrible things going on in the world why not just allow yourself a little framework where you can be nicely scared just embrace it they are what they are they're ghost stories and I don't think it really matters if you believe them or not you can still be scared by them so we're also dicks in that we like to scare our husbands that don't believe in ghosts and I'm just curious because your husband is kind of a scaredy cat I'm wondering do you go out of your way to like try to scare him and torture him a little bit do you know I I actually don't and people ask me this nice. all the time and they always they always send me things and they're like oh you know show this to Dan ha 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 it'll be really funny you know he's really frightened of dolls and I kind of didn't realize how frightened he was of dolls until somebody sent a really horrible doll puppet to the house as a joke Ooh. anonymously he <laughs> I mean, uh, so he got this parcel and he was like, oh, random, you know, whatever. And we have a P.O. box, but it wasn't addressed to the P.O. box. It was addressed to the house. Creepy. And it was this hideous antique doll and he lost his mind. And I was like, oh, you're actually really scared. <laughs> <laughs> and, then I, and then I kind of literally had to ring the seller on I think it was like sold on eBay and I tracked down the seller to find out where it came from when it was one of Dan's friends had sent it as like a little joke so I don't actually try and scare him because I don't because I think he might he might actually die and he has he also has a heart condition so I don't want to be responsible for his death I don't like the haunted dolls either though honestly so because they're creepy as hell yeah y'all have had stories about people who will actively seek out haunted dolls for purchase I I actually bought a Dybbuk box. Maybe about a year ago, I bought a Dybbuk box and opened it because I was like, what's the worst that can happen? But Dan was like, that is not coming into our house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we had to open it in the car. That's not safe either. <laughs> Even though I don't believe and I really don't believe, there was still a part of me that was like, oh... But what, what if it is real? So I ended up taking this ridiculous dipping box that I had bought on eBay and uh, I put it in a, like a, a public bin about two miles away from the house because I yeah. suddenly got really paranoid. Yeah. <laughs> you should probably search your house because it's somewhere in your house. Somehow it came back. Yeah, it came back, no doubt. It's in your bed or something. I always think that it's like affecting you in dumb ways. It's not something obvious like a ghost coming out and tapping me on the shoulder. There's something you said I think for like the bad juju being out there like if there's something there that maybe isn't necessarily haunting you but like in other ways it's like oppressing you we've seen too many movies you know we think it's going to like crawl in bed with you and go uh, 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 when it's really just going to give you gas or <laughs> it's going to make you break out the podcast is real life ghost stories how did you guys get started doing this Dan was starting a podcast with his friend Will about wrestling and I had been talking about doing a podcast for a while, but never really quite got my arse in gear about it. So when they did their first episode, which never saw the light of day because Will was just way too much of a perfectionist, 
to be able to let go of the little things in the sound editing. So when they did it, I was like, I can do that. I'm also a skeptic, but I have had a, quite a scary ghost experience, which really changed my mindset. And I just thought, you know what? It's a universal thing. Like you can, you can meet anybody in the world and say, do you believe in ghosts? And they'll either say yes or no, but they'll always have somebody in their life with a ghost story. Right. And I think that's really interesting because it doesn't matter what culture you're from or what country you're from. Like all countries have different folklore about scary things. So I thought this is really interesting. And we love watching terrible horror films and stuff anyway. So I was like, oh. that's it. That's what we do. You guys start a lot of your, po- most of your podcast off with a movie review. Oh, yeah. And which is funny because Rebecca and I started podcasting doing movie reviews. I'm a film critic during the day. I'm not right now. I haven't done it in like a year just because of COVID. But we had a podcast called Boozy Movies where we would go to movie screenings and then we'd go get drinks and then record ourselves um, reviewing the movie and swearing a lot. And it was loads of fun, but nobody was really listening to it. So we had to find something else to do. But the one that I was listening to just a minute ago, it was the Catacombs episode and you reviewed Goodnight Mommy. Yes. Uh, that was number 10 in my top 10 favorite scary movies. Cause we had to do a list for some website. I don't remember what it was. Was that the movie about the twins? Yes. Yes. <laughs> God, we do this so much and I have, I have a terrible attention span. So I was like, oh, good night. And then in my head, I was going through all the different films that we've covered with like mama or mom yeah. in the title. And I was like, oh, which one is it? Rebecca and I would always disagree because I like the kind of, I don't want to say more cerebral, but Rebecca's like, she needs blood. Murder, all of that. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of like the weirder and gorier it is. I want all of it. I want like the psychological aspect. I want the gory aspect. And I also want the like, I'm going to be scared later on when I go home and go to bed. We watched um, a movie the other night called Last Shift for our film review. And it's about like a rookie police officer on a shift in a police station that's closing down. And it's quite gory. And when I first watched it, I was like, not really that bothered. But my word, did I have nightmares. They were so bad that I ended up having to sleep with the light on. If you're an adult and you have to turn on the lights at night that means it's good stuff hereditary is one of yes. my favorites and midsummer and midsummer i love both of those hereditary i think was definitely one of the best modern horror films that i've seen i didn't like midsummer however the brilliant part about that film was that we went to see it randomly at like 11 o'clock in the morning and in the cinema and this little old couple definitely in their late 70s 80s came into the cinema and it was only us and them and they said oh, I don't know if we're in the right screen. And I said, oh, this is Midsummer," And they were like, oh, brilliant, excellent. And I was thinking, do you know what this is? They came in to the film, took a bottle of wine each out of their bag, two glasses, and sat and drank a bottle of wine watching Midsummer. And my hero and relationship goals. I hope to God I'm like that one day. <laughs> I did want to ask you about the Catacombs episode. You don't just tell the ghost stories that go along with it, but you kind of get into the history of it a little bit. When you're talking about historical stuff like this, it doesn't even need the ghost stories because the reality behind it is so amazing. Emma, in your episode, you were talking about, what did you call them, the cataphiles? Yeah, there's so- a whole group of people called cataphiles and they have mapped and explored the catacombs to an enormous extent, more so than anybody else, really, even yeah. the police. Apparently, if you meet the right people, you can get unofficial tours with cataphiles. The only problem is, is that you're taking your life into your own hands. It's been, I don't know, 10 years since we've gone, but it was like, they're like very specific pathways right that they take you down and like everything that you're not supposed to go anywhere near is like roped off there's people inside the catacombs that are like don't go in there so i'm like how do you sneak in so they have various entry points all over paris yeah and they can be like manhole covers or they right. can be like storm drains whatever and they find these entry points but back in i think it was like the 80s there was a group of cataphiles that broke into official government buildings and stole the only map for the catacombs essentially like a marauder's map of the catacombs that has been passed down and they do loads of cool stuff they like do restoration projects they like have cinemas that they build in the catacombs i literally think of like somebody posing as a cataphile or whatever and then leading you to your slaughter if a cataphile reached out to you and said I'll take you in here. Uh, I'll give you references. Like, would you go in and do one of those tours? I don't think I would. I am the clumsiest person in the world, first of all. So I would be the person that would fall and get injured 
and you know wouldn't be able to get out of the catacombs but I just think they're so dangerous there's parts of the catacombs that are underground swimming pools essentially and you have to like swim through it to get to another point no way am I doing that if you had a chance to come over to the states what is a haunted location that you would want to go to I would love to go to Waverly Hills I worked in a psychiatric hospital that was very similar to Waverly Hills and that was where I had my like ghostly experience and whatever the history of Waverly Hills is incredible the professionals that worked there like the nurses and the doctors were on the whole incredibly selfless like they gave up their lives knowing that they were likely going to catch TB and die and I think you end up in a situation where because of the Hollywoodization of hauntings places like Waverly Hills get this reputation of having like these really cruel doctors and nurses who punish the patients and that's why it's haunted which is kind of unfair actually because it weakens the legacy of these people who were incredibly selfless so I'd love to do the historical because I think from what I can gather there's a historical tour of Waverly Hills but there's also a ghost tour so I'd love to do both you've said many times that you're a skeptic are there any of the stories that you've come across in the entire time of doing your podcast that have made you be like something's really happening here we did an episode recently on the Da So which is a sleep paralysis demon because we we regularly I, you know I've listened to your guys stories too like you often get people write in with sleep paralysis stories and then I get messages from people going I can't believe you're reading another dream story I'm sick of hearing stories about people's dreams and I was thinking well there's definitely more interesting stuff going on here so I did an episode about the DAS so and I didn't really think it would grip me as much as it did because it was all about how this sleep paralysis demon of like this haggard old woman is cross-cultural sleep paralysis is obviously a real thing it's a real biological condition and it happens to lots of people but there isn't really an explanation for why so many people see the same thing regardless of where they are in the world the whole episode was centered around the Hmong people who came from Laos and they fled their country and ended up settling in America but their death rate was way higher than average despite the fact that that none of them seemed to have underlying medical conditions that would cause their death but all of these men were reporting having experiences with the Da So at night time so she would come this night hag this demon she would come to them at night time in the form of sleep paralysis and then these men would mysteriously die and it got so outrageous that the CDC got involved because they thought something's killing and these men so there was lots of research done into it there was a lot of questions about like the placebo effect but the opposite of that so if you really believe something that can have the power to have a negative impact on you why are you a skeptic so i had this really crazy experience when i was 17 i started working in essentially it was an old asylum and um, it was a mental health facility and i worked as a nurse's aide and i worked with people with profound intellectual disabilities and it was an incredible experience and the building was built in 1832 it was opened up as a mental health facility and it was pretty horrific the stories about that place are like just awful 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 as with all mental health facilities at the time because people just didn't understand it right so when I worked there it obviously wasn't that type of place but it was the same building so there were various points where I'd have to go to different points of the building and you'd realize you were completely alone in this huge facility or there was one time like the fire alarm went off and on the panel it said it's in the basement and I was like oh I didn't even know where the basement was so I went to see the basement and and the basement with this was this huge like stone slabbed basement and on the walls there were uh, like metal rings where you probably would shackle people because I and I was like whoa what are those rings for (laughs) and the guys that were with me just looked at me and I was like Oh, I'm putting two and two together. So that was the kind of place it was. And I, you know, I had a great experience there, but there was one particular day and I was having a cigarette and I was leaning against the wall and I looked up and made eye contact with a woman who was looking back at me from what I knew to be an empty building. She was watching me and I was watching her. If she had spoken to me, I would have heard exactly what she said. Like that's how close she was. And I looked up at her and she was, she had long dark hair and she was wearing like a white kind of gowny shift type thing. And I'd say it was about maybe three or four seconds that we made contact. And uh, then she 
she drifted away from the window, which sounds really stupid, but she didn't step away. Yeah. She didn't like disappear. She just drifted away. And I just didn't say anything. And there was another girl with me who was having a cigarette. But I remember getting this like swooping feeling in my stomach. About 10 seconds later, the girl that was next to me just ran. Like... <gasps> just ran and I was like oh my god why are you running and she was trying to get her key into the door and she was going did you not see that woman did you not see that woman and I was like yes I did see that woman oh dear and the the building that she was in I knew was closed for the bank holiday weekend so I thought right somebody must have broken in and I went and I got a security guard and I said hey somebody's broken into the child and family offices there was somebody in there and he was like no that's not possible and I was like no no, it is because I've seen her and so did the other girl that was with me she saw her too and he went and checked and the whole building was code locked as in the only way to get in is to input a code and if you get in without the code or if you're moving around it would have set off all the alarms there's no way he was like there's no way somebody could be in there and I was like no no there was definitely somebody in there (laughs) and that was fine and I just kind of thought okay well that was crazy like have I just seen a ghost but about a year later I was having um, a conversation with a group of staff members we were all on our break and they were talking about you know strange things that had happened in the building and somebody said oh Emma tell them what happened to you so I did And this nurse, whose name was Alan, he literally rolled up his sleeve and all of the hairs on his arm were standing on end. And he said, I see her all the time. (laughs) And that same building, about a year before I started, they had an exorcism mass in the building because there was so much spooky shit going on that people were starting to refuse to work nights. So I kind of was always really skeptical because, am I really skeptical? I don't even know if I am anymore because like I said about the DASO, we get so many stories from people just like you guys that out line a pretty similar thing yeah. and that's really weird i don't even know if the word is skeptical but i have the same thing where i've actually since we started the podcast i've become less spooky because i hear so many of these stories and you hear kind of like repeated themes or i'll hear something and i'll be like well no that's probably such and such or that's your anxiety getting to you the shadow people thing that's that trips me out i've never seen one rebecca has seen one yeah but it's been a while and i i don't I don't like it. What are you guys working on right now? Currently doing an alien story. So I hate alien stories. I like it literally. It's the one thing that makes me want to die. I can't watch alien films. And I've established through doing the podcast. I think it's because it's the fear of not being believed. So if you say to somebody, I've seen a ghost, they'll be like, oh, ghosts aren't real. But they don't judge you for it you know what I mean it's that it's just one of those things that everyone has an ex- some experience with but if you say to somebody I was abducted by aliens they're going to be like oh you need help <laughs> which is a very different response and at the moment I'm writing a story about the I think it's called the Kelly Hop- Hopkinsville encounter and it's this family in back in the 60s who have a literal gun battle like a, a they, <laughs> they have a standoff with these aliens that accidentally land on their land and the people of Hopkinsville I think it was I can't remember when it was they wanted to boost tourism so they kind of dug really deep into their old archives and they found this wild story and it was the family went to the police there was a police investigation sounds like it was a pretty big thing so I'm Ah. really excited to write this story because it's it's equal parts hilarious (laughs) <laughs> and ridiculous and I'm excited because you know I, I'm sure you guys get that feeling as well there's there's a limit to how many haunting stories you can do in a row sometimes they get a bit samey so every so often I feel like okay we'll do an alien story I hate it but we'll do it we don't get enough UFO stories we want more right. UFO and more Bigfoot stories because yeah. yeah we've got dead grandmas and dead pets for weeks and if you need a movie to review for that episode I'll tell you the one that like ruined me uh it's Communion is based on this book by Whitley Schreiber, and the movie stars Christopher Walken. Whitley was uh, allegedly abducted by aliens over and over again, and the way the book describes it, oh my God, it's very kind of real, and what the aliens do to make us forget that we're being abducted and probed, and again, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling like you sound like a crazy person now, but there are scenes that if I think about it, it'll keep me up for three hours at oh night. Oh my gosh. So yes, I'm recommending, of course, it's not. it probably doesn't age well at all. You're gonna watch it and be like, this is shit, but 
Whitley Schreiber communion or fire in the sky. Oh my God. Have y'all seen fire in the sky? No, I have not. Uh, what was the guy's name who was abducted? He does all of the alien conventions. He and Whitley. Travis Sh Walton. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. Rebecca, you have to write. I'm clear. I'm like, I'm going to watch both of these movies because they both sound amazing. I think fire in the sky probably ages a little better than communion. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, both Travis and Woodley Schreiber, anytime there's a big anniversary or whatever in Roswell, they're always yeah. out there. The idea of being abducted and then also having your brain tampered with where you can't remember it and being probed. Rebecca knows I have probed dreams. She has sexual probe dreams. They're not sexual. They suck. <laughs> it's not an alien but it's big. But it's probing. And it's going where it shouldn't. And there's always a reason for it in the dream, but it's like, no! Didn't you have one where it was somebody famous that probed you? I have really gross dreams about famous people all the time. We're not going to go into that. It's a totally different podcast. Sorry. <laughs> sure. All right. Emma from Real Life Ghost Stories. Love the podcast. Please give our love to Dan. We'll send him some sort of creepy baby doll head or something. But thank you so much for spending time with us. We kept you way longer than I intended, but you're awesome. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, it's me. I'm such a talker. Once I start, I just don't stop. I'm sorry. No, no believe me. We, we have the same yeah. word diarrhea. No problem. Thank you, Emma. Thank you so much for having me.